Hello folks, I'm Dr. Call, and first things first, hi Larry, um, I met Larry yesterday, that would be Wednesday on the 28th of March, and we spoke shortly about um, diabetes and the way the world views diabetes really, especially all the myths and the misconceptions around it, and some points that uh, were really important takeaways for me, I, I, I'm sure, I'm hoping Larry agrees with me. Um, are what I would highlight for anybody who's really looking for this kind of information, that firstly, sugars don't cause diabetes. So just because you eat something sugary or like a sugary treat doesn't mean that you will be diabetic. It's not that simple. Secondly, um, every single fat in the world under the sun is not necessarily a solution, uh, nor is it necessary to stick to one fat and hope that things change. Uh, sometimes you really have to figure out what works for you, so it is worthwhile trying the occasional diet, but uh, that's not the only solution. And finally, getting advice from anybody who's going to charge you for it is, for me personally, uh, the one factor that puts me off when it comes to healthcare. I feel like anyone who knows enough or is concerned enough and is invested in something like wellness uh, for people usually is doing it and hopefully hopefully doing for, doing it for the right reasons um they should be doing it without a charge um it will cost you nothing if you're an expert to be able to guide people in the right direction and give them some resources it's a whole different story of course if you can have to make detailed life plans for them or um, come up with a detailed diet or exercise regime or you know medication or whatever but Anything that's going to be a 10-minute consultation or something that's quite basic, don't let anybody charge you for it. And if somebody does charge you, I think it's probably advice that you, you can throw away right then. Uh, with that, I had a really good experience again yesterday um, with the Team Buckeye Peloton. These are uh, a group of wonderful people who've done great things uh, here at OSU to raise funds for Pelotonia, the charity that I'm trying as far as I can to support because Pelotonia supports my research here at OSU, studying the links between diabetes and breast cancer. So what you'll hear shortly is just um, firstly a brief conversation on my part um, about my research here at OSU and uh, thereafter a few words from Mr. Zach McCoon who uh, organizes and is essentially the assistant director for this particular Peloton for this particular team and is doing some incredible work um, just summarizing essentially the impact that Pelotonia has across um, the Midwest. So stick around, have a listen, and uh, hopefully we'll speak again soon. Long time captain this year. Everybody give a round of applause. This is why it's so great to work with Advancement this early in the morning because you are required usually to be so upbeat and Energetic. <laughs> Maybe it's just the extra coffee from the Panera, but thank you for being here on a rainy morning um, and for participating. We just wanted to take some time, one, to say thank you for your efforts over the past couple of years. So you've been a great representation of the university's commitment to Pelotonia. Um, and just like Dave had mentioned, those people like Susie and Erica and all of you who have been supportive in this effort over the past couple of years, um, thank you so much. And we're so excited for the 10th year uh, this year as well. But I wanted to highlight a little bit of the impact. So that may be the piece that we don't always see, um, but we actually have the honor of having Kirti here with us today, who is a postdoc fellow with Pelotonia. She can talk to you a little bit briefly about her research and why this is so important to her um, and the money that you raise as writers, virtual writers, volunteers, and members of this university community, um, where your money is going as well. So I'll turn the floor over to Kirti really quick before we start talking about um, Team Buckeye. Thank you. Good morning, everyone, and uh, thank you for having me, actually. Um, we were having just a brief chat about how not only is it important for, I suppose, the team to see the, the fellows who are the human side of, of science here, but it's important for us as fellows to also see um, where all the effort's coming in from, because uh, the impact's really only half a ways, uh, unless we know who's really counting, um, you know, making all the, all the um, contributions count. Um, I want to begin with a question, uh, if that's okay, and I, if I could just have a show of hands. How many of you know uh, what diabetes is? Okay, and how many of you know someone with diabetes? It's pretty representative. 
how about uh, cancer? So a lot of motivation in here, and breast cancer specifically. Okay, that's fine. So last year, 2017, the CDC stats around uh, diabetes were that 30.3 million individuals in the U.S. alone were diabetic. That's 9.4 percent of the population. So approximately one in <coughs> ten were diabetic in just the U.S.A. Here in Ohio, that stat is leading up to 11 percent. Again, not a very good number. Whereas last year, in terms of breast cancer, there were about uh, 250,000 new diagnoses of highly invasive sorts of breast cancer just in the USA. That led to 40,000 people losing their lives to breast cancer. Again, just bre breast cancer last year. The mortality rate around uh, breast cancer here in Ohio, in spite of all the efforts from Pelotonia, from OSU, the one from clinics all over Ohio, uh, is almost 20%. That's to say one in five people will still lose their lives and battle against breast cancer. Again, I'm highlighting that's just breast cancer, not a lot of cancer cancers. So here's another question. What do you think is the percentage of people with breast cancer who also have diabetes? Just hazard a guess. 50, 30. That's pretty high. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> it may be closer to that we find someday, but I hope not. It's actually 16, up to 16 percent, which is a pretty high number. So as you said, my name is Kirti Kol. I uh, started my uh, research career as a PhD student at the University of Exeter in England, where I looked at diabetic complications. And what I studied at the time was how the body's own defense mechanism, the immune system, starts contributing to complications of, of diabetes, like diabetic eye disease, diabetic uh, kidney disease, even heart disease. Later, during my first postdoc in Germany at the German Diabetes Center in Dusseldorf, I was looking at how certain conditions can, uh, <coughs> specifically metabolism related, can actually promote diabetes in some people, whereas some individuals remain resistant to diabetes. So I started looking at, uh, in my early form of my career, diabetes from an, um, a long-term chronic point of view and pre-diabetic state, essentially. Um, but as I mentioned, the overlap between diabetes and breast cancer is prevalent from the numbers we're looking at today. And these numbers are probably still a very conservative uh, estimate, saying that 16% of individuals with breast cancer are also diabetic. So it became really important to me to understand the mechanistic links between diabetes, metabolism, and breast cancer. And why would that be important? Well, largely because research in this area could result in uh, new therapies or therapies that could actually still improve ongoing therapies. So chemotherapy could be made less toxic by small improvements that come from research like mine. And this year, I've had the uh, great opportunity of being supported by Pelotonia uh, as part of my research program as, as a proposal I wrote to study the effect and the uh, influence of the <coughs> immune system's specific metabolism and how it dictates the function and the uh, promotion or essentially the, the prevention of breast cancer in some individuals. Uh, my study here at OSU with Dr. Gunju, who is a specialist in immunology and immune function, is going to allow me to be more trained, further trained in, in this area that I haven't really known so much about before. Uh, like I said, I come from a diabetes background, but it gives me a great opportunity to um, marry different skill sets and potentially come up with solutions that we haven't known before. Um, and for all your efforts for this reason, I am particularly grateful because naturally, it is through efforts like yourselves, like folks like yourselves, with uh, the kind of funds you raised last year, especially. I hear 75,000 was it last year alone? Yes, it was close. I mean, these things make a huge difference, uh, not only, only to the lives of patients, but also to the lives of the scientists who are coming in from different backgrounds, uh, from different uh, streams and disciplines, uh, trying to make a difference and trying to genuinely look for answers. So, for that, thank you all so very much. Um, the other point is what I find really fascinating about Pelotonia and what really inspired me when uh, Mary Gibbons mentioned uh, this particular peloton to me was uh, I like the philosophy that Pelotonia has that besides just uh, the one goal which is to cure cancer, there's an ongoing quest to also increase awareness and to raise funds. Uh, this is exactly what the whole ride is about, trying to make as big of uh, an event out of it to make people understand uh, the gravity of the situation. And I personally always related to that, to that a great deal myself. So throughout my career in research, I've made a point that um, 
my research is always put across uh, to the lay audience where it actually has an effect. For people to really understand um, to what extent what we're doing in the labs translates to their lives. And to that end, I've uh, previously in India, Germany, and last year here in Columbus, uh, pulled together and organized events around yoga, around exercise, or around uh, meditation even, um, to help with either you know, getting rid of stress or just getting some exercise routines in, in your daily habit as a way of combating things like diabetes. Now, naturally, this year, because of my association with Pelotonia and also uh, because of what I'm trying to do with breast cancer, one of the biggest factors that we find contributes to metabolic issues and also breast cancer is actually the lack of activity. Something I'm trying to do this year, and I'd love to have volunteers from perhaps even this room, is I'm trying to do something around dance and exercise in July this year. And I'm still fairly new to Columbus. I've only been here about just under a year. So um, since you are all such a fantastic team, I'd love to have somebody on board or some of you sign up to help me uh, pull together this, this organization, this, this event, uh, so that we can, again, raise funds for Pelotonia, but also um, specifically raise awareness around breast cancer, diabetes, and metabolism. So with that, I'd just like to thank you all for your attention and uh, everything that you do for the scientific community. Thank you so much. Excellent. Thank you, Kirti. I'm so excited to see how passionate, obviously, our fellows are about the work that they're doing, but also so you know that they have to raise money for Pelotonia as part of their contract. But to see that they're not just, you know, doing it by in a passive way, she's thinking about how does this intersect with movement, how can I actually improve health outcomes while I'm raising funds, um, is very impressive. So thank you for your commitment and thank you for being here today. Thank you. Um, and thank you all again for being here today. Um, as you mentioned, my name is Zach McCune. I'm the Assistant Director for Team Buckeye. Many of you are probably familiar, I'm sure everyone is familiar with my Direct Manager, Carl Kuhn, um, who's out in Seattle today, who he has rainy weather as well, so he's not <laughs> missing anything here. Uh, but he does send his regrets and he can't be here with you all this morning. Um, so we manage the university's effort in Pelotonia from a grassroots level. So what that means is Team Buckeye, as you know, is the Super Peloton, the official team of The Ohio State University. Last year we were concentrated in 70 different academic units and departments um, across campus. So we had teams all the way from student Pelotons, we have a new one this year, the BSR Student Alumni Council. We're happy that they are actually starting up this year. Um, we had a really fun team called the BSR The Rolling Eyes, and if anyone wants to take a guess where that came from, Optometry. That was pretty pretty intuitive. Um, we also had a Team Buckeye the stream team. Anybody? Videos. No. 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 Urology. <laughs> so, our teams do get very creative. Um, we also have a very general Team Buckeye bikers for Brutus. So it's not going to necessarily be localized to function. I knew that'd get a couple of you. How red am I? Don't tell me. <laughs> So, but Team Buckeye really is a grassroots effort. Um, it doesn't just stop at faculty, staff, and students. We also are trying to incorporate our alumni community as well. And we've had some great conversations about that and how do we get that going as well. So we thank you all for your efforts and for being part of it today. And for anyone who's participated in the past, can we get a show of hands? Who has been a writer before? Awesome. Thank you. Who's been a virtual writer? You can keep those hands up if you've done both. Awesome. What about a volunteer and a donor? It'd be $5 or more. Maybe it was a pizza fundraiser. Excellent. I think I saw every hand go up today. Thank you so much, because it really takes your efforts to raise the money that Pelotonia has raised um, in its 10 years being in existence. So we'll go into a little bit of the history. Um, so we've had over 440 student fellowships that were actually funded. Um, that's at the undergraduate, graduate, and postdoctoral level, with the $157 million that have been raised to date. So Pelotonia was founded in 2008. Much of this information is probably not new to a lot of you, given your familiarity with the event and what you've done. Um, but last year was $26.2 million alone. And if anybody knows Stephanie Smolucha down at Pelotonia, their director of fundraising, one thing she tried to get the team to do was run a marathon in honor of the 26.2. It didn't go over so well. So I think Steph's probably <laughs> the only one doing that. But if anyone would like to join with her, I'm sure she would enjoy the company. Um, but as part of that, Team Buckeye has been able to raise over $17 million for Pelotonia's total. So that's a very impressive number as we are the beneficiary of all the money that's being raised as well. And then you'll also see that we've had 100 different, 108 different idea grants, as well as 87 senior scientists funded. That's recruiting the best and the brightest here to Ohio State to make sure that we are retaining um, and recruiting innovative leaders in the field, and also three statewide initiatives. So 
uh, Kirti was speaking earlier to some of the um, poor health outcomes that we actually have here in the state of Ohio. Um, and if you've gone to a James um, new employee orientation, they actually put up the heat maps for you to see. They talk about breast cancer, they talk about smoking rates and lung cancer, and you can actually see we have some of the highest rates of these diseases. So these statewide initiatives are incredibly important. We have something like beating lung cancer in Ohio. Um, you'll be seeing a lot about that, especially if you're over on the cancer team side as well. So and what's super important is that you all know that 100% of all the dollars raised by Palatine actually goes back to funding the mission. So you're not paying for anybody's um, trips out to NACDO. You're not paying for Doug Allman to go on vacation. It's actually impacting cancer research. So what's unique about Palatine and what's a great selling point for us as a university is to say that all of that, all these efforts, the administrative costs are underwritten by corporate donors and sponsors and private foundations. So when you are out there making that ask for an extra five, ten dollars, have confidence knowing that the money that you're soliciting from family and friends is going directly to impact. So this is just a little bit of a breakdown. You can see in 2009, which is actually the first year of the ride, we only had about 2,200 different riders and 4.4 million dollars, 4.5 million dollars raised. Excuse me. And then last year we had over 8,022 different riders from 41 states in nine countries. And that's not to count the hundreds of donations, well, the thousands of donations that came in from hundreds of countries around the world to make up that 26.2 million dollars. And last year, out of that 8,000, we had over 1,200 Team Buckeye riders. So you can thank yourselves, pat on the back, everybody that rode last year. Um, and we hope this year to keep that growing as well. So how can you participate? So we mentioned the different ways briefly. You could be a writer. Once again, thank you to those writers. So as a writer, you actually set up your distance. You can say, I want to commit to writing 25 miles, and that would be great. We'd love to have you do that. You'd start downtown. You'd have a fundraising commitment of $1,250. Maybe you are super adventurous. And this year, as uh, Dave was alluding to, we have 10 routes this year. Traditionally, we've had six. They're bringing four into the fold, 10 years, celebrating with 10 routes. So they're bringing back the 75 mile route. Has anybody done that one before? No, you won't see me doing it either, that's fine. Um, <laughs> and then I'm a 55er. So if anybody's rode that one before, you know how pleasant that is. It's great, especially last year, the weather was perfect. I'll stop rambling on about that. Uh, but you can go all the way up to 200 this year. So a double century ride for those of you that are super ambitious. It's the two day, 180 mile experience that it's been with an additional 20 miles around Gambier. And if anybody's familiar with the topography up in Gambier, you know exactly what you're getting yourself into. Um, but those fundraising commitments step up with every distance. So all the way up to $3,000. But if you'd like to commit, you know that you're capable of raising the money, or maybe you'd like to make that contribution. This is a great way, um, if you're recruiting people to the Peloton, that you now have the giving capacity. Maybe they want to get involved in Peloton in a very organized way. They commit to being a high roller. So what that five thousand, what that high roller is, you commit to five thousand dollars or more as a donor or a fundraiser. But maybe shimming into spandex in the middle of August is not for you. You can be a virtual rider, and we welcome that. So virtual riders have a lower fundraising commitment. They do not pay any registration fee. It's a one hundred dollar fundraising commitment. So you do still put your credit card on the line. You're committing to helping raise this money, but it's only one hundred dollars. Raise your hand if you have five family members or friends. You know five people. <laughs> Great. Can those five people probably give you 20 bucks? I would say maybe. We would hope so. Yeah. You know, students, it might be like pulling teeth to get an additional $20, but um, I know that we're all capable of doing that. But maybe you'd like to participate. You want to be there during ride weekend. Maybe you're um, a great bike mechanic and you don't like to ride them as much as you like to fix them. We need that help and that support along the way because our ride is fully supported. It's not a race, so we're not going to see people out there that are super competitive. I'm not, it's really a leisurely stroll. You can take it as a personal challenge, but nobody is going to be encouraging you to finish at a certain time. So what we like to do is to make sure that ride is fully supported with people who can fix bikes, people that are really gregarious and outgoing, that are gonna be there along the rest stops, passing out food. Um, we need first aid help as well, because if you fall off your bike, maybe you have an accident, you scrape your knee, trip, some people trip, it happens. Um, <laughs> or maybe your helmet goes rolling off, you want people to be there to help you as well. Ask Carl about that, I won't share his story. Um, and then we also need donors as well. So thank you for your gifts that you've made, maybe in um, honor of your own writer and support of a colleague, um, but it definitely makes our effort worthwhile. We actually had over 3,000 volunteers last year alone, which is really crazy to see that it takes that many people to really make this experience for the 8,022 writers what it was. So 
Here's a little bit of the breakdown with the fundraising commitments. I'll make sure that we send this around. These are also available on the Pelotonia website. So you just go register to ride and you can go ahead and see these distances. What's cool about this as well is when you click on these um, on the website, it'll show you an actual map of where you'll be going. So you can chart out what the elevation is, a turn by turn of that 135 or that 155 if you'd like to do that. One thing I will point out, you'll see a new ride up there at that 35 mile. That's a Sunday only. So that's something that we're marketing. Maybe you have a household that everybody wants to ride, but somebody needs to pick somebody else up. This is a great way to do that, especially if you wanted to get a lower fundraising commitment and a lower uh, mileage. So it should be a really great ride. So uh, what's also unique about Team Buckeye and Ohio State, Ohio State students are the only students in the state of Ohio or elsewhere who actually receive a fundraising discount. So if you are a Buckeye that's an undergraduate, a graduate, um, or a professional student, you have a fundraising discount of about 50% roughly what a non-student rider would receive. So we call these our BSRs, our Buckeye Student Riders. So as you can see, we have a couple different tiers. Those first few distances are going to be $750 for uh, the mileage, and then it bumps up to $1,150, and then again to $1,300. This is to make this a little bit more accessible for our students, um, for those BSR of the Rolling Eyes students, for the SSC Peloton, um, and for others as well. It's a great thing that Peloton has been generous to offer all of our students. So if you have people that are on the fence, maybe student employees, people within your department, this would be a really great way to get them involved as well. So and then how to join Team Buckeye. So you have really great resources here in the room that are already available to connect you. Has anyone registered already? Have you already been approved and connected to the Peloton? Okay, you're doing a great job. A plus for you, David. Thank you. <laughs> Out of the back. Um, but as you can see, what's been different about the Palatania website this year, there were a little bit of a hiccup um, on the developer's end to make sure everything was up and running. But one added benefit of that new structure is that all of our Pelotons are online already. So when you registered, you probably saw for the first time the ability to go through and select Team Buckeye Advancement. And so then Dave had requests that were pending that he could just go through and approve. So anyone that you're trying to recruit can go ahead and pre-select now because all of those should be active. It's a really great way to track. You can go online and see how the Pelotons are doing. You just click on your own profile, click above it to see Team Buckeye Advancement. You could say, hey, we said that we wanted to commit to raise $100,000 together, and this is where we are at to date. Very much similar to the dashboard that a lot of you fundraisers have to use as well. So um, a little bit more about Team Buckeye. So if you rode with us in the past, you know that you receive a Team Buckeye jersey for free which is really unique. Um, we're in the process of designing those right now. Does anybody know Matt Faulkner over in our world? So give Matt some credit. He really helped us a lot last year, and he's working on some good stuff this year. So if you have some cool design ideas, you don't have to send them to me. You can send them to Matt, So because I'm not going to be able to do them. But that's one unique um, and added benefit. We also have a bike lease program. So if anyone does not own a bike, this is a really great way to get them started. If they're like, eh, I don't want to buy one, so I'm just not going to do it. They have no excuse now. So we have brand new road bikes that we've actually been able to purchase from Roll on Lane Avenue through the generous support of a donor over the past couple of years. So his support by way of $80,000 has allowed us to purchase these bikes and raise over $310,000 by supporting riders with this program. So it's a $200 lease fee. It comes with that brand new bike, it comes with a helmet and also a lock. So you can keep your bike safe, you can keep your head safe. And you can also take the bike to Roll on Lane Avenue and they'll fit it directly to your measurements. So they'll adjust the seat, they'll adjust the handlebars, make you put a helmet on and ride it around the parking lot a couple times. You look goofy, but it'll make sure that you have a comfortable ride when you're out there as well. So this is only available to Team Buckeye members, but students, faculty, staff, alumni, anyone who's riding with us can participate in this program. So we also have some very unique Team Buckeye fundraising opportunities. So who's familiar with the Team Buckeye raffle program? Awesome, you've used it in the past. Um, this is a really great way for us to be able to support our riders um, because we are a public institution. We can't, and we don't even think it's a great model, be able to sponsor your ride or to pay your registration fee. But what we can do is offer you unique Ohio State experiences that will allow you to exceed your fundraising commitments. Last year, the raffle raised $88,000 alone through the support of our friends over at Campus Park who donated three reserved uh, parking spaces here at the university. So you check out a packet of tickets, you sell them to your family and friends, and anyone who is an Ohio State student or faculty and staff member was put into the drawing to win one of those parking spaces. So three people got them. I think they all were women whose names started with a K. There were two Kristas and I think one Chris, maybe, which was just coincidence. 
um, but it was a really great opportunity to bring people in. We also had two sets of Presidents Club level season football packages, and the Blackwell Inn actually donated a brunch or a lunch, depending on the time of the day that the game was, for you and one other person. So along the way, we had other great prizes too, like a weekend in Hawking Hills, um, as well as a signed George Hancappy jersey. If anybody's an avid cyclist, they know who George Hancappy is. He's on the Tour de France. He actually came to Palatania last year and was a special guest in addition to Joe Biden, which was pretty cool. And he zipped past me as I was five miles out, and he was about 75 miles in to that day's ride. So that was really confidence boosting and reassuring. Um, <laughs> just stayed in my own lane and kept going. It was great. Uh, we also do a lot of work with unique Ohio State vendors. So as you know, there are approved vendor lists that you all work through. There are people within your department or people that um, you may be working with on a daily basis. We actually have resources put together for you, um, especially as Peloton leaders, to work with these vendors, to solicit them. There's a lot of quid pro quo language to make sure that this doesn't affect their contracts. It's a safe way to ask for a gift in support of your Peloton. Um, all the money that comes in from a vendor has to go to the Peloton account. It doesn't go directly to a rider account, but maybe you have a great connection back at home, you have a local bakery, somebody in your neighborhood that you want to support you. We ask you to please make that ask as well. There's also a Peloton fundraising toolkit. Has anyone used that in the past? I'm seeing some kind of cautious nods. They update this every year. So it's about a 20 page document, maybe it's 18 for 2018, not really sure. It's on the Peloton website. We can send that out to you as well. It has different fundraising tactics throughout the year. There's a calendar that says if you register in March or February, things that you should be doing every month. Maybe your birthday is coming up. Last year I was turning 25. I was asking for $25 donations for my birthday instead of a birthday gift. That was a semi-effective way of getting people in. I got a couple of donations that way. I think it was an easy way for my brother just to say, leave me alone, happy birthday. But it's a really fun thing. They tell you how to get creative with social media, and they've also given a really great little asset kit this year. So these are graphics that are perfectly formatted for maybe your Instagram or Facebook that have impact quotes. So talking about some of the research that um, folks like Percy are doing in the labs every day, some of the impacts that the dollars have been able to have over the past 10 years, as well as cool quotes from Joe Biden and some other people too. So it's a great way just to raise awareness on social media and then redirect people back to your back to your account. So other things that have happened throughout the year, different rider rewards and incentives. So last year we had a donor who was willing to engage with Team Buckeye and give us about $12,000 to support riders and to recruit new riders. So we had the Rider Rewards Program. I know, Susie, you participated in this last year and a couple others, I believe, as well. To where if you, as an existing Team Buckeye rider, were to go out and recruit a new rider, you'd get a $50 gift for every person you recruited, and that person would also get $50 into their account. So in the week that we did this alone, we registered over 100 new riders to Team Buckeye, which was really incredible to see, and we helped people raise some money on top of that as well. Panera is also super supportive, so um, save your receipts is all I can tell you. Has anybody used the Rider Rewards program before? Do you know what it is with Panera? Yes. So Panera will give you, it's pretty much cents to the dollar for all the money that you spend there from May until the middle toward the end of September, and they'll deposit that money directly into your Rider account. So you don't have to worry, other than submitting your receipts online, about tracking that. You just go in, and you can do it all at once, you can do it as you go throughout the year, just keep tracking it with your same account number, um, and hold on to your receipts. So we're going to be doing that with Team Buckeye today and the catering like we're doing for the recruitment session. So if maybe you're going out on a donor visit or you're entertaining somebody for a meeting and you are using Panera, save that receipt, make a copy, and put it in for the Rider Rewards program. Kroger has also been a generous supporter of Peloton over the past couple of years. They sponsored the Survivor jerseys. So every Survivor you go on, if you register in your profile, you can indicate whether or not you are living proof, meaning you're a cancer survivor or um, you're currently undergoing treatment. Panera, or sorry, Kroger wanted to support them, and so they donated all three jerseys and gave them a gift to their ride. What they also did was reward riders with a surprise bonus donation. So between the hours, I think it was at midnight and then about 8 a.m., every $50 or more that would come in to your ride, they'd match it with a, a $50 gift. Peloton was able to raise over $299,000 in probably eight hours last year because the money ran out super quickly. So if you see that, Team Buckeye will be plugging that, we'll be pushing it ahead of time to make sure that you know this is coming down the pipeline, probably before the rest of the community does, to help you raise a little bit of extra money. So Carl, for example, I think he put out the ask the night before, 
he got his first gift, and that was the only one that qualified, but he raised 600 additional dollars that day. So I think I was around 200 or 250 when that program launched. Chipotle also did something last year when they launched their queso. So they had a market ride fundraiser. I know we have mixed feelings on the queso. We don't have to get into that right now. Um, but if you went around and you took a photo of yourself with their burrito bowl or chips and guac, whatever money you purchased, all you had to do was tweet out or post on Facebook or Instagram, whatever social media form you use, a photo of yourself with your food and your ride rate. It's kind of awkward, but it was worth the money in the end. You could be eligible for a $30 gift from Chipotle, which you really need to see their support as well. So if you know of these things and if you're watching them ahead of time, um, you can make sure that you take full advantage. To, and we'll make sure that we push this out to Dave and the captains and uh, make sure you have every opportunity necessary. So, and then also we have the Team Buckeye social media channels and the distribution list. If you are having a fundraiser or an event, especially as a Peloton, or maybe you want us to highlight, hey, everybody go to this happy hour at um, Land Grant to help support our ride. We want to help promote that for you. We have limited things from what we can do from our official standpoint, but we can show you ways you can market that and get that out to your audience as well. So if you have any questions, please feel free to contact us. We are available. This is my job full time, um, and it's Carl's as well. So we really want to be able to make this as successful as possible. Team Buckeye, we have our own fundraising goals this year, and I know uh, Team Buckeye Advancement does as well, and it takes everybody coming together collectively as writers, virtual writers, volunteers, and donors to make this a success this year. So with that, I want to turn it over to questions. And I'm not going to leave unless I get one or two. So maybe that should be awkward on my part, guys. Um, this probably is for Dave, but is it Team Buckeye Advancement is setting a goal of 100? Yeah, is that okay? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're setting for 95. Okay. So, okay. Um, this should be easy. What, uh, in the past, where have we fallen in, in terms of how many Buckeye Advancement riders have we had? How many do we need to get for Buckeye Advancement to succeed in this goal? Last year we had 75,000. Mm -hmm. So oh, I think many, we just. How many riders? So we think last year, and if you can correct me if I'm wrong, I think it was around 30 to 40 riders, somewhere in between there, and 15 to 20 virtual riders, and we had fewer volunteers last year. Mm -hmm. So typically, advancement has been split up into Team Buckeye Advancement, and then for the past couple of years, there's a Team Buckeye Great Americans, which was advancement from 660 Ackerman. Last year, those were merged together, um, and Patty had set an ambitious goal for the team of $100,000. And on average, Team Buckeye riders raise about $2,200 despite their commitment level, um, which is good. That number has been increasing for us over the past couple of years. So to get that 100000 in theory, we would need 50 people. Yeah. But if we could have 75 people doing that, we could crush this goal. That would be great, too. That's, that's what I was thinking. Instead of looking for a dollar goal, we should try to get as many new advancement riders. I feel like since like every year you get like a, similar, like a lot of similar faces in this room, like it's always about 25 to 30 of us that are always riding in. A few new ones, if we can figure out a way to get to 50 right off the bat, and then if we average 2,200, we crush it. That would be perfect. Um, and keep in mind also that you being the connection back to advancement at Peloton, if you have a family or friend who wants to ride with you, please bring them in. Yeah. Um, because as long as you are participating in some way and you are their connection back, that they can join Team Buckeye because they're a family or friend at the university. It goes with alumni, buddies that you may have that are out there that are like, oh, I'd really like to maybe participate a little bit more this year, have them sign up as a virtual writer. So, and what's also great about this, um, Peloton is coming out with a new app this year. It's gonna be launched in May, early to mid-May, called Pool, it's P-U-L-L-L. -L -L. So it's very similar in concept to Map My Ride or to Strava. Its working name used to be the Anywhere, Anytime app because they want you to be able to fundraise anywhere at any time. And it's not just limited to cycling. So maybe you're like, I haven't participated in Peloton yet because I'm not a cyclist, I'm a runner or I like to walk, or maybe I just like to do yoga. You could actually mark your fitness, and map it, track it, however you'd like to, and money has been put into a pot through private donations and corporations to donate back to you for every mile or every minute that you participate in some form of a physical activity. So going back to that concept of encouraging healthier lifestyles, building a community around this, and allowing us to do it remotely. So it's five, 10, or 15 cents, I think, for every form of activity. And it could really help fundraise in real time while you're out there training and while you're out there doing the normal healthy lifestyle things that you're all doing every day. So it's a great way just to bring more people in. And volunteers, like I said, don't have a fundraising commitment level, but if we encourage every volunteer on all of our Pelotons to raise 20 bucks, that would be really incredible. So I think we could have raised over $30,000 last year if we did that. Yeah. 
Yes. In Correct Joe. me if I'm wrong, yes. but last year, uh, the celebration of Joe Biden came. Mm -hmm. I think it was just the writers got to go, not virtual writers. Am I correct about that? So opening ceremony, that is correct. So if you are a, it wasn't limited only to writers. If you were a writer, you automatically had a ticket to okay, go. So if you were a virtual writer or a volunteer, you could pay $20 to get a ticket unless you had exceeded a fundraising commitment level of $500 or more. You were instinctively given a ticket at that point. Um, that was just an added incentive for virtual writers and volunteers, um, unless you were a volunteer who was working in opening ceremony, which we have many who did that. Yep. Will that be the same going forward? That'll, we expect that to be consistent. Mm -hmm. So Joe Biden will be there, right. at least to my knowledge, but somebody else will be as well. Yes, Michelle. Is the writer incentive, I'm assuming that's just for actual writers, not for virtual writers, just so they can recruit them to other conferences? Yes, and we may not have the exact same incentive this year, but we're working to model something very similar to that, but it was only for writers. Yep. So we do have uh, virtual writer fundraising incentives as well. So I mentioned that ticket to opening ceremony is one. If you raised $500 or more before opening ceremony that weekend of Pelotonia, that you would be able to get that ticket. You also got a t-shirt from Team Buckeye, and you had some swag from Pelotonia, and then it bumps up again at $750. So there's also a concept called fund sharing, and many of you are familiar. So we've encouraged Dave um, to communicate fund sharing guidelines. It's supposed to be kind of a safety net to maybe you participated in team fundraisers and you were $50 short of your commitment. Instead of being charged, if there was money in the team account, they could help you get to that. We're encouraging people to not rely on that because like we were saying, on average, Team Buckeye riders raise above the commitment level for a normal rider. So we have provided a robust pipeline of resources. Pelotani has as well. We don't think you'll need it, but in the case of the emergency, that could be an option to talk to Dave. Um, we're not going to dictate what that looks like, but it's really a conversation you all should have together. Um, and as I mentioned, the fundraising deadline, or maybe I did mention, doesn't even close until October. So many of you probably know that. The ride is in August. You have two additional months to raise that money. So it's usually two months to the day before we would start charging credit cards for the um, delinquent accounts as well. So we only had, we had very few delinquent accounts last year as part of the Team Buckeye. Super Peloton, which was really great to see. That's it. Do we have any other questions? Well, thank you all so much for being here and for your efforts, and we are really looking forward to the 10th year with you. Um, please take some Panera on your way out, uh, because we already have the seat. Grab some coffee. And <laughs> enjoy this beautiful sunny day. <laughs>